Okay. So balancing this first one, uh, we put a 12 in front of the carbon, we're good. And an 11 in front of the water, we're good. Um, so that first molecule is covalent, but it's big. And it kind of looks like the sugar molecule, except even bigger than the sugar molecule. So definitely that guy's going to be a solid. And then carbon is a solid on the table. And this is water. So a liquid's fine. Bouncing out. Next one. Two. Three. And then that's seven. And so a three here. Um, this is a, that first one's a small organic, uh, sorry, a small um, covalent molecule, but it's got oxygen on it. It's actually, that's the formula for ethanol. So this guy would be a liquid, your gas, your gas, your gas. Oh, uh, reaction types. The first one, what type of reaction is the first one? Decomp. And the second one? What about third one? Okay. I'm balancing. Uh, I think it's just a two right here, right? So this is one of those instances where you could balance an entire polyatomic ion. So there's two ammonias on the left, and I put two ammonias on the right, and then everything worked out. Um, so because this is a double replacement reaction, these salts need to be aqueous. If they're solids, they won't react. And then this guy is a solid because carbonate would be a solid in, um, in an aqueous solution. And then this one's aqueous because the ammonium and the chloride are both soluble. Uh, all right, so... In the second uh, reaction, yeah. I thought that uh, CHO, uh, C2, was a gas. Um, that oxygen being in there uh, makes it a little tricky. Oxygens that are that have hydrogens attached to them are almost always going to be uh, liquids. Um, I know that because the smallest possible oxygen hydrogen molecule is water, and it's also a liquid. So this is actually ethanol. But it's because that oxygen has the opportunity to be bonded to a hydrogen. And if that wasn't the case, then then it wouldn't be a liquid. Um, okay, so I need to double this guy so I can get an even, even situation and a three here. And then that gives me two chromiums. Um, reaction type. Yeah. And then, so that's a solid on the table. That's a gas on the table. And this is an ionic substance. Metal, non-metal, no water presence. So that guy is a uh, a solid. And then let's see, we've got, if I put a two in front of the lithium chloride and a two in front of the lithium, I get balanced. This is what type of reaction? Um, the lithium is a solid on the table and the barium is a solid on the table. And for the lithium to react with the barium chloride, this thing would need to be aqueous. So the salts on the uh, re uh, reactant side for any of the single replacement or double replacement reactions always need to be aqueous or they won't react. You can't just take something, some metal and throw it into a, a solid salt and have it react because it's already connected to, um, to the anion, so it won't let go. It's a solid on the table. Well, yeah, it's aqueous for sure. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to burn 25 grams of magnesium metal. So you're going to do something like this. You're going to do exactly this in lab today, except it's not going to be 25 grams. So um, when you burn magnesium metal, it's the metal that's in like sparklers and flares. Um, I want you to announce it your group like hey everybody I'm about to set something off that's brighter than the sun and I want you to do that because I don't want somebody to like you know see that white spot and then look right at it and be like oh I got that little 
burn sensation in my retina for like an hour or something or other. So when we do this today in lab, it's just going to be like a little strip of it. And just make sure you make a nice and nice loud announcement so everybody knows what's coming. So we're burning magnesium. So then this is magnesium. And since I'm burning it, it's combustion. So that's oxygen. And we're going to make magnesium oxide. All right. And so to balance this out, I need a two there and a two there. And so I'm going to take 25 grams of magnesium. So I got a mass of magnesium and I want to get myself to a, uh, a count. So a number of moles of magnesium. And so then it's 23... 24.305 grams of magnesium. So that'll turn it into a count, a magnesium count. And so for every two moles of magnesium, I'm going to make two moles of magnesium oxide. Where did those twos come from? The equation. So I have this two here and that two there. And so that's where those guys came from. So that gets rid of my moles of magnesium. It tells me how many magnesium oxide molecules I'm going to make, and I need to turn that into a mass. So for every one mole of magnesium oxide, it's going to be whatever that is. 24.305 plus 15.9994. So that's 40.3044 grams of MgO. All right, so that number times 25 divided by 24.035. And that's 41.5 grams of magnesium because I have three significant figures, or magnesium oxide. Okay. What mass of oxygen am I going to need to make that happen? Well, I'm going to do the same sort of thing, except instead of uh, calculating out the magnesium oxide that's going to be made, I'm going to calculate the oxygen needed. So the first several steps here, I'm going to write exactly the same thing. So 25 grams of magnesium, one mole magnesium, 24.305 grams of magnesium, and two moles of magnesium. All right. So now I'm looking for oxygen. So I go up to the balanced chemical equation and it's one mole of O2. And then one mole of O2 is 31.9988 grams of O2. And then this works out to be 16.5 grams of O2. All right. And since there's only three substances, is there a quick way to do, to do that uh, to, without doing a railroad track? And the answer is yes. I know I put 25 grams of magnesium in the container and I ended up with 41.5 grams of magnesium oxide. Uh, I used all of the magnesium. So 25 of these grams are, are because of magnesium. And that leaves me with 16 and a half grams of the other thing. And there's only one other thing. So you could have gotten that just by doing some addition or doing a, a quick subtraction problem. But again, it only works because there's only three things there. In a lab, would you wait until the very end to use any of your rounding? Because in this one, you use your rounded figures in your calculation a bit to throw stuff off. Did I use rounded figures? At the end, at the very end, the, just the shortcut way of figuring out how much oxygen. Oh, just this one down here? Right. Um, That's yeah. fine. That's fine. Yeah. You don't need to worry about it. No. It's, it's going to give you the same answer anyway, because you're going to end up rounding that answer and it'll, that'll round you to 16.5. Okay, so this is a limiting reagent problem. And I know it's a limiting reagent problem because I've got two substances and I don't know which one's going to run out first. So the first thing I need to do is come up with a balanced chemical equation. So sodium. And I'm gonna take that sodium and I'm gonna put it into water and I'm gonna make hydrogen gas and NaOH. So when people make problem, uh, mistakes on this, the most common mistake is just put an H down instead of an H2. Can't be just H, it's gotta be H2 because it's one of the diatomics. And then, is this balanced straight up? 
No, it's three. So let's see, I need a two here. And then I put a two here. And then I put a two here. There's two and two and four and one, two, three, four, and then one, two, one, two. Okay. There's my balance chemical equation. So now I'm going to do two separate railroad tracks. And the two separate railroad tracks are one starting with sodium metal and one starting with water. Um, so I'll do 125 grams of sodium. And then 22.9898 grams of sodium. It's one mole of sodium. And then from the balanced chemical equation, two moles of sodium and then uh, one mole of hydrogen gas and then for every one mole of hydrogen gas the mass is 2.0159 grams of hydrogen gas okay so 125 divided by 22.9898 divided by 2 times 2.0159 and i get uh, 5.48 grams of hydrogen gas generated. So what this is saying is um, if I put 125 grams of sodium in with water and I have plenty of water, I will make 5.48 grams of hydrogen gas. So now we need to find out if we had plenty of water. So that's why we're going to do the second calculation. So I've got, again, 125 grams, in this case, of water. So one mole of H2O. Eighteen point zero one five three grams of H2O. And then two moles of H2O. Uh, one mole of hydrogen. And then one mole of hydrogen. 2.0159 grams of hydrogen. All right, so 125 divided by my 18 number, divided by 2, divided by 2 times 2.0159. So this is 6.99 grams of hydrogen. All right, so what's what's my answer? Sodium is my limiting reagent. And so then the answer to my question is 5.48 grams. What happens the moment I've made 5.48 grams of hydrogen gas? I don't have any more sodium to take the hydrogen out of the water. So the reaction stops. So when this reaction finishes, I know I'll have zero grams of, of sodium in the container because it got all used up. I know I'll have 5.48 grams of hydrogen gas. I know I'll have some leftover water and I'll have some sodium hydroxide. And we could do two more calculations to figure that out, but I didn't ask that question. All right, we're gonna explain how to make a magnesium borate solution. All right, so first thing, um, get a 500 milliliter vault flask. Calculate um, mass MgClO3 to needed. Okay, so I've got 2.5 moles of Mg. ClO3 2 per one mole or one liter. I'm going to just move the decimal place over three spots and get rid of the milli and write 0 0.5 liters. So the liters cancel. And then this is one mole of magnesium chlorate. So that's going to be 24.305 plus. 35.543 times 2 plus 15.9994 times 6. So that mass is 191.207 grams of MgClO3-2. So that.
times a half times two and a half. So that's 239 grams. All right, so I'm going to add 239 grams to your flask. Gonna like three quarters fill with deionized water. Then um, fill near line. And then fill two line with a dropper. So using that solution that we just made, now we want to make a uh, less um, concentrated solution. So I'm going to get a 50 milliliter ball flask. Made sure I used ball flasks that you could actually buy, make Levi happy. And then uh, calculate uh, milliliters of the 2.5 molar needed. So we've got 2.5 molar, and I need to know how much of that concentrated solution I need. And I want to make um, a 0 0.5 molar solution, and I want to make 50 milliliters of it. So V1 is equal to 0 0.5 times 50 divided by 2.5. So, sorry, uh, just cancel out the wrong stuff. Okay, so, is that, uh, is that 10? Right? Yeah. So, add 10 milliliters of the 2.5 molar solution, um, then fill near line and fill two line with dropper. Okay.